In this lecture, we're going to set up a user interface to display all of the quest items in the correct order that they need to take place in. So it's basically a graphical representation of the graph that you put together that you can then follow as a player. Now, just before we begin, and something I noticed and you might have already noticed, is that this path list at the top of your quest class isn't actually used anywhere. We're using the path list that's inside of the quest events, which is this one here, instead to store all the paths. So if you go back up to the quest, you can just probably get rid of that if you want to get rid of the warning that keeps coming up in Unity. And then we'll just save it. Now let's go back into Unity and we're going to create a button. So over in the hierarchy, right click and go down to UI and you want to find the button selection. Add that you'll get a button right in the center of the screen. And if we go into 2D mode over in the scene and double click on that, we can find it there so we can design it a bit better. If you take a look at the button in the hierarchy, you'll see that it has a child object called text. And that is the space where the text appearing on the button actually is. And if you go over in the inspector from there, you'll see that there's a text field where you can type something in and you can also set the font sizes as well. If you go back to the button, there's space there for an image. And this is the background image on the button. We're not going to touch any of this, but do feel free to have a little bit of a play around with it to change the look and feel of this a little later. Now, what we also want on this button is an image. I want to have text on the button that shows you which event that you're currently doing and therefore the icon that'll be on the button is going to be some kind of representation of that like a tick box for example if you've done that part of the quest so to get those icons now i went to icon archive i grabbed three images which i'll just show you inside of my projects they're also attached to this lecture as a resource so one of them is the cancel icon, which looks like this. Then we have the OK icon that looks like that. And then we have the settings icon. The settings icon I will use for when a event is being worked on. The cancel icon will be when a task is in waiting. So it's ready to go when you are sort of thing. It's not yet activated because you've still got to finish something before it. Um, but it hasn't been worked on. I couldn't think of anything else to use, which is why I've got this cross, which is probably not the best icon, and I'm sure you can come up with something better. Um, maybe an hourglass now that I think about it. Anyway, that's what we've got to work with. And then, of course, we have our tick, which will make the event look as though like, we've achieved it, we've done it. Once you've got these icons, now they're just PNG files, you have to turn them into a sprite. So to do that, you click on it, over in the inspector, you want to go up to the texture type, drop that down and find sprite, tick that, and then just hit apply. Now, the moment you do that, the icon over in the project will change. Do that for each of these. So let's just set that to sprite, apply, and that one to sprite, apply. Now you've got some textures to put on your button. As an icon select the button in the hierarchy right click and we're going to add a UI image actually raw image to it now it becomes a child and it's a tad overwhelming at first you can see it over here in the scene it's very very large and so we can see it even better select your raw image and over in the specter where it's got texture you want to get a texture so let's just grab one of these it doesn't matter which one because we're going to change them with code and drop them in there it requires a sprite which is why we turned it into a sprite when we brought it in because this image is a child of the button we can then anchor it over on the left hand side so go up to the rect for it and we want to option or alt click and then click over here to move it and pin it over to that side of your button then over in the scene with the, um, I don't know what this is called, that button, that selection button with the little blue corners on it, grab that and then we'll just resize it so that it fits nicely 
and then let's just move it up. When you've got it about the right size, which you probably should try and get it a bit squarer, then you can go again back over to your Rec Transform and Alt click on that just to make sure that your middle aligned it and then just drag it across a little bit if you can grab it to about there so that's where that's going to appear now uh, you might want to move your text once you start filling this button text up here it could get quite large if you click on the text in the button and put something descriptive in here that's long so this is a very long button text message like that you'll get a better idea of what's going to go on inside of the button the text currently is going to go underneath the icon with it selected you can grab its little blue corners and just bring it back across now it will wrap around you can't see it in this case because the text the fonts just too big couple of options here you can make your button bigger and then bring your text out or you could make your font size smaller I'll make my font size smaller so it's 14 now let's just see if I can dial it down okay so at 10 I'm fitting two lines of message on there which is probably all right for what we're doing right now but again that's something that you can play around with. It's really the alignment that's the important thing so that you can see your entire message as well as see that little icon. While we're in here and before we can continue, select that raw image and I'm just going to call it icon. Next we need some kind of container to put our buttons in so that they represent the entire quest. Select your canvas right click and for this button holder we will use a scroll view which is under UI down to scroll view select that you'll get it in the middle I'm gonna put mine down in this bottom corner so we go to its rec transform click on it and then we use the alt and the bottom corner from there you can then play around with where it is in the size over here in the scene view if you so desire I'm just going to leave it like that now, uh, you'll want the scroll bar on the side here to be at the top when you start. Now, to do that, if you open up the scroll view, you'll find that it's made up of a whole bunch of different components. Under viewport is content, and this is where all the buttons are going to live once they're added by the text. But in order to make your scroll bar go to the top, you want to select the content, set its Y position, over in the inspector to zero and that will immediately push it right up the top for you now the other thing you want to do is make sure that when you add the buttons into here that they're all nicely aligned in a grid so you can actually add a grid layout group to this content so select add component we want grid layout group like that the cell size here is the size of the cells so think of your grid layout like a table, which is what it is, and you can um, set up the size of the cells and then anything that you put in it is automatically going to get resized to that cell size. So whatever you want your buttons to appear as, you put as your cell sizes. In this case, let's go 160 for X and 40 for Y. Now if that's not enough when we start doing this we can change it later and for the spacing I think I'll just put a 5 in the Y which will give us a little tiny divider between each button as it sits vertically the other values um, you can change depending on what you want it to look like if you want the child alignment for example to sit in the middle center you can just change it to middle center like that once you've got buttons in here then you'll be able to see how that they behave and then modify this. Now in this scroll view, you might want to have some text at the top that says something like task list. To do that, we can add that as the first component manually. So if you select your content and then right click and go UI text, and then in the text box itself, if we type something like task list, you'll see it start to appear down here in the list. And we want to probably change its 
font. It's currently black, so let's make it white so it stands out a bit. And we can also increase its size. And you might want to align it into the center like that so that as the buttons start getting into this list, they will go underneath whatever's already in there first. So this task list will end up being pushed up to the top of this scroll box. So don't worry about its current position of where it is there. Okay, so now that we've got all of these GUI components ready to go, we can basically start the coding for them. So go back into your quest folder and in here we will add some new code. So create C sharp script and this one's going to be called a quest button. This script will be attached to the button itself. So open that up and we will replace what's in there with this and let's go up to the top. So the libraries that you'll need are listed up here. The most important one is the unity.ui. This will allow you to access all of the buttons and text and sprites and things like that that you need inside of this code. The quest button itself is going to be a mono behavior. The properties that we require to get hold of is the button component, the icon component. So these are the things that we've already just been working with. The text component, which we'll call event name because it will show you the event name on that text item on the button. Then we have three sprites. These three sprites are going to be those images that we set up as sprites before and they will allow us to switch the different sprites on and off on the button itself as the status of that event changes. We will then have a link to the event that belongs to this particular button. So each event will have its own button displaying its details. Then uh, we also need to have access to the status here, which we're getting from the event, uh, which is again using the event status that we set up, the, that enum which has waiting and current and done in it. Now, the first method, there's two of them in this code. First of all, there's this setup. Now, the setup is going to be called from outside. We will pass it an event that we want the button to belong to, and we will also pass it the scroll list that it's going to live inside. The reason being is that we want to create this button, and this code will actually instantiate the button and what it will do is add the button to its scroll list, which is that content box. Okay, so inside of this method, we're just basically setting all of those things up. So here we've got the event. Then we have the button component dot transform dot set parent to the scroll list. The event name. This, remember, is the text on the button. And it can be a rich text box. So if you want to put in any simple HTML type formatting commands, you can. So this is going to bold the event name and then it's going to end the bold for the event name, put a return in, a new line, and then put the description afterwards on the button. We're then going to set the status of the button to be equal to the status of the event. We don't want to keep a different status value here. We want to always link back to the event so that we're only sort of changing it in one place. As we go through this, you'll start to find that this whole system is very sort of intermingled between the graph system that we set up and the UI system that it's talking to. Um, now, I have tried to keep these, these as separate as possible. When we started putting the buttons on, they had to be kind of overlapping at least as far as the event went. Now, next we set up the icon texture, which will initially become the waiting image. And then we make the button interactable, set it initially to false. This gives you that grayed out kind of button look, which means you can't click on it. And it will show you that this particular event is not yet available to do, but it will still appear in the list. Next, we have another method that is called from outside, which will update the button. So it's called update button. We'll pass through an event status, a new event status to it. 
And when that happens, we will then set the status and check what that status is, whether it's done, waiting or current. And if it's done, we will set the icon on the button to the done texture and we will then make the button non-interactable so you can't click on it. Then if it's waiting, it's still not going to be interactable as you can see down here and it will have the waiting texture on it. If the button has become associated with a current event, then it is going to have the current texture and it will become interactable so that we then can click on it. And yes, we are going to program it to be clickable a little bit later. So that's why we're turning these things on and off. So that is your button class, all you need right now. Save that, go back into Unity and you want to find your button that you've still got in the canvas. This is the one we're making a prototype out of in a moment. Attach your quest button code to it. Then once you've done that, find where that script is associated and we want to populate all of these values, all of these exposed variables. So the button component itself, you want to grab the button from there in the inspector and drag it down like that. The icon is the icon attached to the button. So drag that down there. The event name is our text box, which is attached to the button. Put that there. Then we have our three spots for our images. Now they're the sprites that are back in the texture folder. So go back there. The first one is the current image, which is our little cog wheel. Then we have the waiting image, which was my cancel one and the done, which is the tick. Now that's all ready to become a prefab. So I'm just going to put this inside my quest folder again to keep it all together. Grab your whole button and drag and drop it into that quest folder. And now you will have a very nice prefab of it. At this point, we can click on the button that is in the inspector and let's just delete it. In part two of setting up this UI task list of buttons, we'll start to address the code that's going to put the buttons into this task list when we press play. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.